interesting thing is on the EU level, he's one of the biggest supporters mm -hmm. <clears throat> fighting to keep the restrictions from being too harsh. Mm. So he's sort of standing up against, you know, he's kind of become a hero in oh. a way, <laughs> standing up against too harsh a stand. You know, he wants them yeah. to be there to be restrictions. Mm -hmm. But when he sees people pushing for him to be too harsh, yeah. he's been standing in the way, from my understanding, I haven't been a fly on the wall mm -hmm. to observe this, but from yeah. all the scuttlebutt, mm -hmm. all the gossip that's going mm -hmm. around, he's been the guy standing saying, no, they can't be too harsh, mm -hmm. they can't be too restrictive. So he's kind of turned from the arch enemy, sort of like Megamind, you know, the new movie, mm -hmm. you know, where the the enemy guy, the evil guy, turns into the good guy, so he's kind of made that metamorphosis. Okay. Okay. And do you think it's really something from his own personality, or do you think he is more like directed to...? That's a good question, and I don't know. I don't know him well enough to know, but I do know he's been, become kind of one of the good guys in terms of stopping harsher restrictions mm. coming out, okay. at least on the food supplements. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, uh, what makes a healthy diet, just in a short, because it can be longer, right? Mm. Well, it's, uh, um, now I'm forgetting the, the guy who said it, but I think it was, uh, it could have been Linus Pauling, but I, I'm probably wrong on that. The said, everyone is an individual, uh, biochemic individual. And uh, it was actually the discoverer of, of vitamin C. Well, either Zint Georgi or one of his followers said everyone is individually, is uh, biochemically individual, so there's no perfect diet for any one person, everyone's different. So if the nutrient reference value or the RDA for vitamin C is 60 milligrams and they're trying to reduce it to 45, and you smoke one cigarette, you've already destroyed your recommended daily intake for vitamin C just with one cigarette. Yeah. Uh, how come today's food contains much less nutritional value than say 50 years ago? because the, the farmlands have been over-farmed. Over and then when they re-fertilize them, they don't use uh, natural, most farms don't, they don't use natural uh, fertilizers, and they don't replenish the nutrition in the soil, they use synthetic ones that will just be like potash or have nitrogen, be nitrogen rich. And that's about it, potassium, nitrogen. One other thing, but the minerals are gone, so a lot of European soils are totally out of nutrition, especially selenium, which is, uh, European soils are notorious for being deficient in, in selenium. And selenium is very anti-cancer, very anti-viral. So that there's actually a huge amount of health problems due to a deficiency oh, absolutely. in vitamins and minerals. Yeah. You need okay. to keep your immune system up, and the best mm -hmm. way is with high-dose vitamin D, enough adequate levels of vitamin C and uh, essential fatty acids, selenium, magnesium is very important and is very deficient in diets as well. And magnesium will help protect your heart. Is there a connection with today's food quality and uh, with the uh, epidemic in obesity? Oh, absolutely, because they, they uh, put so many high fructose corn syrup sweeteners in now instead of sugar. I mean, actually, sugar, as bad as it is for you, it's a lot better for you than high fructose corn syrup sweeteners or these diet drinks or the like that actually bypass the satiation signal that your brain, well, actually, your stomach sends to your brain that says, hey, I've eaten enough food, mm -hmm. I don't need to eat anymore. Mm -hmm and you keep on eating. And so that's led to a large increase of obesity and eating nutrient-light foods. This gets back to the nutrient-dense diet versus the nutrient-light diet that I was talking mm -hmm. about before because your body is kind of sub, uh, subliminally telling yourself, mm -hmm. I'm not getting enough nutrition, I need to eat more. So you eat more of this nutrient-light food like from McDonald's or whatever, white bread, uh, food that's been overcooked and has fewer vitamins or nutrients in them. Too much processed food. And too many processed foods and you need the nutrition but you aren't getting it so your body says I need to eat more to get that, to get those vitamins that I need. Do GMOs contain uh, the same nutritional values as uh, non-GMO uh, foods? Well, to be fair to GMO foods, and I don't know that I need to be, but uh, you know, it's hard to say across the board that, that GMO foods 
all inferior to non-GMO foods. There are some instances which don't readily come to mind where that's probably not the case. But having said that, uh, I would say in general they are nutrient deficient. Uh, and part of the reason isn't because they have fewer vitamins or minerals in there, it's because of the other components that are there that cause them to be used up more readily, like uh, some of the resistance to Roundup, for mm -hmm. example, that sort of thing. So I'd say in general they're, they're worse, but partly it's because they aren't organically grown either. Organically grown food has been shown to generally be, ha to be having the same level of nutrient the nutrient level is 50 years ago, mm -hmm. whereas if it's commercially grown, agribusiness grown, it's what we were talking about with 50% lower levels of vitamins and minerals. And a lot of that is GMO food. So is it caused because it's GMO food or is it because it's grown in agribusiness commercially? Uh, it's hard to say or separate it out at mm -hmm. least. But I would definitely go organic anytime you mm -hmm. can. Yeah. And again, I say that um, if you would eat one organically grown apple, that would have the same nutritional value as, say, two um, modern way grown mm -hmm. GMO or not GMO apples. Is it a fair ratio? Well, I don't. It, I think it depends on the on the thing. I, I yeah. couldn't say. Yeah. It would be tough for me to say yeah. on that, but. Uh, but it's probably a fair enough example because we're talking about a 50% yeah, decline it, in the nutrients yeah. and I see where you get that yeah. from. So that's probably pretty accurate. Yeah, okay. At least in the case of apples and things grown on the land. So the, the value of the organic apple in a way is uh, higher than yeah. the Yeah, uh, even if the price is 60% more, maybe you're actually getting yeah. more. And also you're avoiding some of the bad things in the food too, like the pesticides and the herbicides, these xenoestrogens. Uh, that I was talking about. Yeah, <clears throat> and I can imagine also that uh, parts of the uh, pesticides and so on also get into the soil. So mm -hmm. if you sort of like uh, want to take care of the next generation with clearing of the soil, yeah, it would well, also be for organic. It's pretty clear by now that what the mother eats really is seen in subsequent generations in her children, uh, even her grandchildren. So it really affects even their breast cancer rate and the like. Mm -hmm has a tremendous effect, much more than they ever thought. Yeah. Um, how about supplements? What kind of supplements do you recommend, <coughs> if any at all? Uh, we just glanced over that one right. briefly well, a little bit. But I think the things you wouldn't get in your diet, uh, even the healthiest diet will not get adequate levels of vitamin D3, adequate levels, exceptions made, of essential fatty acids, adequate levels of vitamin C are very tough to get from a normal diet. You need at least two grams a day and spread out over time because it only has half-life of two hours being water-soluble. So, and you don't want to get a time release mm -hmm. vitamin C. You want just regular vitamin C. Take it some in the morning, some at lunch, and some in the evening. And then vitamin E is very important, and that goes to fertility rates as well. Vitamin E is known as the fertility vitamin. Mm. But you want to get a vitamin E that's a multi tocopherol vitamin E, not just the typical alpha one or the synthetic one. How can people help and effectively uh, block uh, legislation resulting from the Codex Elementarius? How can they? Well, they need to strengthen domestic legislation. They need to try to get their country out of the WTO, mm. out of membership from the WTO. In the U.S., there's actually a bill that's introduced once every five years mm -hmm. by Congressman Ron Paul mm -hmm. to get the U.S. out of both the U.N. and the WTO, actually. Uh, two separate matters, by the way. I joined them together. But in any event, uh, it's always voted down, but uh, other, con other countries could try as well, or other mm -hmm. citizens in, in other countries could try as well to get us out of the enforcement mechanisms of the WTO and the United Nations. Mm -hmm. So that's one way. But also you try to create a domestic legislation to help block some of this, but it's kind of crumbling under the on onslaught of, of uh, globalization. Mm -hmm. So it's a little tough to take this route these mm -hmm. days. Yeah. <clears throat> um, well, if people just encounter um, a local politician, say, um, how would you advise them to approach this politician? What kind of argument uh, they want to use um, 
to, to get through to this politician. In terms of promoting health freedom? Yeah, health yeah, freedom, okay. indeed. Yeah. Uh, well, you always look to the only pressure point you really have for them, other than money, which we don't advocate <laughs> bribing them, <laughs> but, um, but is the fact that they may get not, they may get defeated in the next election. Mm -hmm. So you have to put pressure on them because, as we've always said at NHF, mm -hmm. politicians don't see the light, they just feel the heat. So you've ah. got to be persistently vocal mm -hmm. at presenting your view. So you've got to show them that there are a lot of their constituents, a mm -hmm. lot of the people who vote for them, who won't vote for them next year on this particular issue. Mm -hmm. And so, and you'd be very specific on the issue and you just keep repeating it like the you know advertising message that mm -hmm. you can and you contact them by all different means that you can you call them you write them an email you write them a letter you go visit them personally in their offices mm -hmm. either alone or preferably mm -hmm. with friends and like-minded people or even family like-minded family who go down there and, and present the case for whether you want something to be pushed, whether it's anthroposcopic, uh, the petition there, the Elliot petition, or something of that sort, mm -hmm. and you just keep pushing, 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 and you be persistently vocal. Mm -hmm. And then when you've done all that, then you start over again. Mm -hmm. And you start with that process, and you get more friends to go in. And if things are on the internet talking about certain mm -hmm. things or in the the printed paper, mm -hmm. you make sh sure you write in, if it's opposing your viewpoint, write in and oppose it, mm -hmm. because too often they have their little plants there to put their little views out in the media, and you need to defeat that, you need to confront it, and you need to refute what they're saying. Okay, um, so, and, and when you're sort of like at a party, for instance, and you meet your intellectual friend who is studying at a university, mm -hmm. how would you get uh, this person on board? Well, there, it really depends on the situation. There it's not as easy because their pressure point may be something different. It's not getting reelected because they aren't up for election. So that, it's really so individually specific. You can do, uh, there's a name for it, which I've since forgotten, which is <coughs> you, uh, well, you can use neuro-linguistic programming on them, perhaps. <laughs> To change their viewpoint yeah. and to address that issue, you can do the part where you find the common ground, mm -hmm. show the grounds of agreement, and then gradually try to move them away from it, but they may not be inclined anyway. You yeah. just really have to hit that middle ground of those middle ground of mm -hmm. peoples who will respond mm -hmm. to your to your arguments and yeah. that really depends mm -hmm. on the individual so yeah. much. Yeah. And they could be subject to so many influences outside your presence that you don't even know about, that you don't know whether or not they will, you know, keep what you give. Maybe at the meeting with them, your argument mm -hmm. after an hour or a half a day, they go, yes, right, yeah. I agree with you. And then the next week, they're totally <laughs> back, and you say, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. And it turns out they're... Family. I mean, you just think about this with cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. You know, when someone goes in, you convince them not to do chemotherapy, mm -hmm. not to do radiation, not to do uh, the surgery, perhaps, mm -hmm. but to do an alternative technique. And the next thing you know, they're in for chemotherapy. Why is that? All the pressure, the media, the circumambient environment, the the press, the doctors, their own, you know, husband, wife, their own mother, father, children, whatever, put pressure on them. How could you do that s stupid thing, you yeah. know, alternative therapy, you need to do the regular route. Yeah, and also, uh, just to finish off this one, uh, I think that also when people are on a great load of stress, mm -hmm. they usually revert to uh, things they have learned that's very true. early That's in a life. Good point. You're right. And yeah. uh, it's a stress yeah. do, does mm -hmm. uh, to people. Yeah. It takes you back to your old programming mm -hmm. and um, what yeah. you feel most comfortable with. Yeah, I agree with that. It's sort of like reverting to the mean or reverting to the default position. Mm -hmm. And the default position usually is conventional society. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what can we do if, uh, despite all, all of 